Roger Federer is out. That's right, he's lost his opener for the 2017 grass court tennis season. No less to the 39-year-old Tommy Haas. Federer fans are freaking out around the entire world, wondering what does this mean? Ah! <laughs> Federer lost the first round! What does this mean for Roger Federer's Wimbledon chances? We're here at Coffee Break Tennis to tell you this is actually one of the best things that could have possibly happened. And I challenge all of you out there to ask yourselves, when was the last time Federer lost to Tommy Haas? We're gonna get into all that and more right here on Coffee Break Tennis. Tennis fans haven't seen Roger Federer playing actual tennis since March, uh, early April, if you go back to the final of Miami where he defeated Rafael Nadal for the third time of the year, and his fourth time beating Nadal consecutively. But since then, if you're a casual tennis fan, you might be wondering, where has Roger Federer been? Well, he's actually been resting, and a lot of people, including myself, have thought that rest would do him very well to win Wimbledon, just like it helped him win the Australian Open after taking almost half a year off in 2016. Yeah, dude, like, Federer took off, like, a couple months to get real rested, gonna win all the grass course tournament, gonna be number one in the world. Wait, what? He lost the heat? Today I'm going to give you three reasons why Roger Federer losing to Tommy Haas is the best thing that could have possibly happened in yesterday's tennis match. The last time Federer lost to Tommy Haas was on grass in the year 2012. Guess what happened in 2012? <laughs> That's right, he won Wimbledon. It was the last time he won Wimbledon, the most recent time he won Wimbledon. It was so sweet. The roof was shut, the rain couldn't stop it, and he destroyed young Andy Murray at home. It was so wonderful. And what happened before that, leading into that, during Federer's warm-up experience in Halle, he lost to Tommy Haas. By what score? 7-6-6-4. <laughs> That's right, here's yesterday's score from Wednesday, and here's the score from 2012 Hala Final. Now I know it's not the same tournament, and I know it's not the exact same score line, but the bottom line is this. That's not important. What matters is, Federer went out 7-6, 6-4 in a grass court tune-up tournament in 2012, and then went to Wimbledon and held up the trophy, the champion's trophy, not the little salad plate. So I'm going to take this as a great omen, because Tommy Haas hasn't been doing a whole lot of winning. What are the odds that Tommy Haas would pull it together in his farewell tour, where he's been losing usually in his first or second match at every tournament he's played this year, for him to take out Roger Federer? It just seems kind of odd. How could that possibly happen? Because it was meant to be. Just like it was meant to be in 2012, Federer is going to win Wimbledon. Have no fear, Fed heads. First off, let's talk about the obvious thing. Do you really want 35-year-old, almost 36-year-old Roger Federer playing 10 matches going into Wimbledon? He just took two months off to be well-rested going into Wimbledon. I was pretty alarmed when I heard he was playing at Stuttgart. He usually just plays Halle. In fact, he's never played more than one warm-up for Wimbledon. Well, except for last year when that really, really bad thing that we're not going to talk about happened. But let's forget about the fact that he played Stuttgart again this year, like last year, and focus on Halle, the important thing. Just one grass court tournament before Wimbledon. It's a winning formula. It's worked several times. You see, there's actually a very fascinating correlation between Roger Federer's performance at the grass court warm-up event Halle, Germany, and his performance at the grass court championships of Wimbledon. 
That's right, Professor. There's a major correlation between Roger Federer's performance at Halle and how he does at Wimbledon. In fact, when Roger Federer wins in Halle, he has an 88% chance of winning or getting to the finals at Wimbledon. So reason number two of my top three reasons why Roger Federer losing to Tommy Haas yesterday is a good thing is that he doesn't have to get worn out playing a ton of matches in Stuttgart and Halle before he goes into Wimbledon. Because you would have to say, if he did win in Stuttgart, he'd have to play at least four matches, then he'd have to play at least that many in Halle. Federer always does well in Halle when he does well at Wimbledon. He wouldn't be very well rested going to Wimbledon if he had to play all these matches, even if they are best out of three sets. So in order for Federer to do well at Halle, he needs to be well rested enough to do well there and bring the energy and do well at Wimbledon. Losing early at Stuttgart gave Federer a good tough match to get himself ready for the grass court season, playing a good three-setter against a great player in Tommy Haas. And now he's got time to recover for winning two tournaments back-to-back, -back, Halle and Wimbledon. And finally, the number three reason why Roger Federer losing yesterday is a good thing. Look at it like this. When was the last time Federer lost this year? That would be in Dubai to Evgeny Donskoy. I don't think many of you know who that is. I'll give you a hint. I think the guy was ranked like 190 in the world. It was a big shocker. A lot of people saw that match and thought winning Australia was a fluke for Roger Federer, and we don't think he's going to be doing very well Indian Wells or Miami. However, he went on to win his next two tournaments, Indian Wells and Miami, back to back, a feat that hasn't been accomplished by many people. So guess what? I'm calling it right here on Coffee Break Tennis. Roger Federer loses early at Stuttgart, just like he did in Dubai, and then he follows it up with winning his very two next tournaments back-to-back, -back, Halle and Wimbledon, as he's done so many times before. Thank you for tuning in to Coffee Break Tennis. Let's play that music, and it'll take us out of here, and I'll see you guys next week with another edition of Coffee Break Tennis. Yes, you see, the Fed on the head is actually a reference to the popular RF monogram headwear, as you see, prominently featured right here on the front of the headgear. This is commonly seen on the grounds of tennis tournaments worn by the adoring Fed fan. Okay, Professor, the people get the reference. Yes, 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 of course. How very precocious of you.